Hey team, it's day 54. Hope you're doing great. Wanting to touch a little bit about the six goals. Uh, I understand that uh, some people, you know, you get followers, you get people to jump in and off, uh, different people to look at the videos. So I just want to touch on the six goals and then I'm gonna go through one question I got is, how many meals should I eat a day to lose the most weight? So let's go cover that after we get here. But if you remember, uh, from day 54, but the first in the beginning, I started out at like 232.6, 233. I said, I'm gonna drop that down and we're gonna lose 26 pounds over 13 weeks, two pounds a week. I was back up to 216.6, it was 215.6 yesterday. Like I said, there's gonna be a little bit of whipsaw based on the lack of sleep I got and eating on the road this weekend. Yesterday I had 2,255 calories and I only got 183 grams of protein. And why do I focus on the protein with myself is really is because I'm trying to, I'm trying to maintain as much muscle as I can and I'm a little bit heavier guy with a little bit more muscle mass. So I wanna try and keep that as, as much as I can and I understand I'm gonna lose some of that, but that's the reason for the protein and I just like to eat protein. Um, I only got six hours of sleep only 35 minutes of activity, just super busy first day uh, and getting to what I needed to do for work. But all in all, just wanted to reiterate what this program is. The basic premise is the rule of 10. If you remember what your starting weight is, you add a zero. What the weight you wanna to get to, you add a zero. And those are your calorie ranges for me. It's 2300, cause I started out at 232. Put a zero behind that, that's actually 2320. And then 2000 because it's 206 pounds. 2060 or 2000. So my range is from 2300 to 2000. And remember, you kind of try to want to sit at the lower end of that range as much as you can, but bounce in between that range and you should eventually get down to your goal. Uh, and as you get to the bottom of your goal, just ensuring you're sticking closer to that bottom range. Pretty simple. It sounds like a lot, but it's not really at a zero. Stay in between it. You're going to be tracking your calories. Water, 115 ounces. I got 116 ounces. Um, sleep seven to eight hours because after you watch all these videos, you remember the hormones that go along with sleep and why you need seven to eight. Uh, you know, the first phase sleep or slow wave sleep that you get is really uh, important for your uh, human growth hormone, which is this focuses on lipolysis and muscle growth and all good things. And your second wave is really your deep REM sleep that. Uh, takes care of all the other hormones that are involved. Uh, and if you don't sleep enough, your cortisol levels rise, your brain craves more sugar, is leading to overweight, heart attack, stroke, early death. So um, activity, I always said, is optional, but we wanna try and get 30 minutes a day. That, could, that as far as I said, is like walking, just, just being active, like getting up with uh, the pandemic that we had, just moving around. And then as far as like protein, completely optional. You eat the way you want, it's basically, based on calories, eat lower than what you burn. The rule of 10 tends to be pretty accurate as it relates to what your basal metabolic rate is just to maintain the weight that you're at, add a zero to it. That's how many calories you should be eating if you don't really do a whole lot to maintain your weight. So there was the overview again. And the other thing I wanna to talk to you about is uh, people ask to you know, show progress and show pictures. And remember what I said in the beginning again is I'm gonna show pictures on in the beginning and then the first month second month and third month. Well, I was gonna wait till the third month, but I'll just, uh, what do we got, day 56, 57 coming up. I'll post videos side by side from, I think I took a picture the first day and then I did, I like, oh, I should do a video. I did that, I think like 10 days in. Then I did the video four weeks in, like 20, day 28 or 29. I'll do another one here coming up eight weeks in, uh, and then I'll put them all three beside each other so you guys can see my progress, knowing that I got like four weeks, five weeks left before we hit the end of this challenge. So update for any new people that are watching this, that's what's gonna happen. There's the whole uh, premise behind the trifecta. And the most important calories, water, sleep. You get those, you work your way up. You should see good weight loss based on all three of those things combined together. So how many meals should you eat per day? And uh, I was colorful yesterday, let's be colorful again. So how many meals should you eat per day? Well, there's been studies that have looked at three, six, four, five, one. And um, so a lot of different things have looked at these numbers of eating each day. And what they've found uh, really is the most effective thing is, I like pink, is um, it doesn't matter. It 
the main purpose behind this, like I've told you guys the whole time, is it's more about the calories that you maintain and sleep and, and the hormones and things, but it's definitely related to the calories. Now, that's why intermittent fasting works. That's why uh, people will be on keto right away and they'll lose all that water weight, like I told you about carbohydrates. Uh, the average human, when in eating normal amounts of carbohydrates, has a pound of glycogen. We know we store three to four times the amount of glycogen we have in our body, so that means we store three to four pounds of water when you don't eat any carbs. That water gets released and flushed because you gotta drink more water on keto. People see quick weight loss uh, on the keto diet, but then they realize they plateau or uh, go into a flat line over time because they're eating their maintenance calories and they can't get past a certain weight. I don't know why I'm keto. I'm supposed to be able to eat all the fat and meat that I want and just, you know, all the fat that I want and, and just lose weight forever. And that's just not true. It's still related to calories and what your body needs. Calories in, calories out. Really at the most basic level. So the amount of meals don't really matter. Uh, but what they did find is another blue just to go breakfast. Um, if you're eating breakfast in the morning right away, there's something about blood sugar stabilization that actually does make sense uh, in a lot of the literature that I've looked at over the past and just long term is I'm not a huge breakfast fan, but I do like to drink coffee with a little bit of heavy whipping cream in it. I've told you guys that. That's kind of my vice. Uh, and one thing I've noticed is as I do that, that stabilizes me until lunch. And I've noticed even with that little bit of cream, uh, it tends to kind of neutralize my, um, my blood sugars a little bit. I don't know why, because it's just coffee and heavy whipping cream. So the biggest thing to me is when you eat breakfast, you tend to stabilize that blood, gl blood glucose. So your blood glucose levels stay pretty consistent. Now remember our brain needs a constant supply of blood glucose or sugar, right? Uh, and after like three hours, it, it's okay. Your body's digested pretty much what you ate the previous meal. Four hours, it starts to drop. Five hours, it, it drops pretty significantly and whammo. Uh, you know, that's where the cravings start to hit because brain says, I need sugar. Now, what I've found curbs some of that if you're not a breakfast eater, if you don't want to eat. Some people can lose a ton of weight just on one meal a day and they eat all their calories there or those little windows of like two to three hours, uh, is that the water really helps. The water really helps fill you up, flush things, and a lot of times, a lot of us are walking around dehydrated and we're mistaking that hunger for thirst. Uh, so that's another thing is drink a lot of water. But there is something to be said about breakfast. Um, and the main thing about breakfast is it can stabilize. Mm, uh, I don't know if that's how you spell it. Can stabilize blood sugar levels um, for, for the start of the day. Yeah, whatever. I don't need to write it. But it can stabilize your blood sugar levels and then keep them stable to where if you eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then a snack. So like those four times, you, it, there was a study that just showed it doesn't, it allows you not to crave as much, but you can't overeat because there was another study con conversely that showed six meals a day actually makes people hungrier uh, because they were overeating. So it would make them crave because when they got to that last meal of the day of the morning, uh, they tended to crave food before they went to bed. So as soon as that you know, that blood sugar spikes higher at every meal, you know, that starts to drop off, you crave again. So really, it doesn't matter overall how many meals you eat. It's mostly based on calories. Eating breakfast in the morning could help to uh, curb some of those hunger cravings or pains that you maybe get if you don't eat and you get really hungry at, at lunch. Or when I noticed when I used to drink um, some of those artificial sweeteners or monster energy drinks in the morning, I would get like super hungry right around lunch and I would get there, get ready to eat and I'd grab some chips or some snacks just because uh, I probably had that artificial spike of glucose from the artificial sweeteners and then my body kind of craved that a little bit and I wasn't drinking a lot of water at the time either. So all in all, doesn't matter how many meals, based on calories, if you want, breakfast will help you to start to stabilize your blood glucose or blood sugar levels throughout the day uh, to ensure that your brain doesn't start screaming for some snacks and overall planning is the key for you to ensure that you get in your calories, you get in your nutrients, you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables that are big on roughage and, and space, but small on your calorie density. They're more nutrient dense. We talked about that a couple days ago. We've covered a lot 
in these uh, 54 days. So if you have any questions, let me know. But I really wanted to put this to bed. Like, hey, if you are comfortable with eating two meals a day or three meals a day or four meals a day, or if you're eating six, uh, over six a ton, it's a little crazy. It's like, how do you eat that much with, you know, without calling it grazing, um, where you're just constantly eating all day. Uh, whatever you're eating and comfortable with eating per day, it's good. You don't have to change that. But know that, put a zero on the end of your body weight and put a zero on the weight that you wanna to get to and that's the calorie range you should stay into. So regardless if you're using red, green, yellow, Weight Watchers, points, um, or calorie tracker like I recommend because it helps you identify different foods, how calorie or nutrient dense they are, and over time you just get used to what your body eats and how it reacts to certain things. That's what matters most is the calorie and technically what they call calorie restriction or calorie management to ensure that you're eating what your body needs and therefore you're getting to use most of that or all of it as fuel so you can maintain and continue to lose weight. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, comment below if you want any other um, content like this. Uh, if you want something specific over the next few videos or whatever, again, I will be posting my results, uh, picture results or video results, whatever they are, in a few days because you asked and other than that, thank you very much for your support. Thanks so much for your following. And as always, I look forward to talking to you tomorrow.